What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Everyday Struggle from the Crib, the Desk of Academics, and Wayno here. We've got Polo G with us this morning. Look, we've all been locked up inside. I know you were in the studio recently with NLE Chopper. How is it practicing social distancing in a studio? Um, I don't think everybody else care about it because I know me coming into the studio, I got my mask on, I got my gloves on, <laughs> and everybody just got licking in their hands, looking at, me, looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> that's wild. At least you're trying it, though. I mean, that, that's kind of what happens, and then you kind of take your own guard down because you look like a goofy with the mask and the gloves like you a surgeon. Then all of a sudden, 30 minutes later, you, you got a, a couple licking in your hand without your gloves, too. You know what I mean? But, I mean, like, do you at least bring less people to the studio or, like, even when you're moving around? No, I ain't an entourage type of person in general, so... I'm going to pop out either Dolo or probably with, like, my pops or something. Mm. That, that's interesting. I've never heard, I've never heard our, his uh, artist say that before. Yeah, well, yeah. that's interesting. I mean, that's interesting. And then it reminds me, you know, you know, he's from Chicago, but he's in Cali, moving around. You know, uh, you know, with the death of Pop Smoke, who's from New York and went to Cali, do you move a little bit different in Cali? Are you a little bit more, like, cautious? Like, how do you move out there? Because we see a lot of people transplant or, or like, like go out there to, you know, get music done, collaborations. But, you know, that's not their backyard. That's not really a comfort zone. How do you, how do you move and make sure you're safe out there? I still, I still move the same way. I, I'm just, like, a little hesitant with what I post or what I show on social media. Because um, not too long ago, like, a, I say in, like, February, that somebody, like, like I had a break-in in my crib when I was gone. Really? And I had just calculated it, like figured, okay, they was watching me be away from the crib and watching me post this certain part of my crib to know how to get in there. So I moved differently in that, but for the most part, I moved the same. Like I'm to myself, I watch where I'm going and stuff like that. That would make you paranoid? That would make me paranoid. Like I remember somebody broke into my car one time. I had to get rid of it because I'm like, like I kept having those. I'm like, yo, damn, somebody violated my space. I know California is like the the B and E capital where you know people like love to break in shit and they kind of watch your whereabouts. But don't that make you like, damn, hold on, man, maybe I was slipping. Yeah, I was a little, you feel me, like apprehensive after that. But I was a, I actually moved though. I mm. ended up moving. So. Okay. All right, so you, are you good now? So what have you been doing during quarantine? Are you spending most of the time in the studio? Are you home with your family? I think we all, like after we were talking about before we started rolling, everyone's trying to figure out how to fill all of these hours because you feel like you keep waking up to the same day every day. Um, I really don't. It's like hard for me to get into my creative process again because I'm at the crib because I know I'm at home. Even though the studio probably an extra room or two down, it's like I got to feel like I'm driving somewhere. I got to feel like I'm actually out there doing something. So sometimes I just, um, it's like they got a Herald spot in Hollywood, just like in Chicago. So I just go out there and stand outside <laughs> and make myself feel like I'm doing something, man. Has, yeah, has has that process like hindered you a little bit creatively too? Like it, like when you're making these when you're making records in a crib, is it a little bit different? I always equated like having a studio in a crib to like having like a gym in the crib. It's like it's too easy to not work out because the couch is right there. So like it hasn't been days where you wanted to like get into the stool in the, in the crib and be like, nah, I'm gonna just chill. Like I'm not I ain't gonna do it today. Not even that. It's like for some strange reason, like I don't even feel the beats the same. Like I gotta be hearing that shit off the studio speakers, and like I can't even just like, cause my pro my writing process is I just sit down. If I go to the studio and I hit a beat and I instantly get to type it in my notes, but for some reason, like me just being here and in this type of space, trying to go through that same process, it just don't feel the same. Interesting. So how you released your debut album last year, and of course you're working on another one to drop relatively soon. So is most of the project complete already? Are you just piecing things together? Or are you still trying to finish up records? Like, how has it actually been then forcing yourself to get in that creative zone while we've been at home? Well, it was a good thing that after I dropped my last project, because Die Legend, that was my first project ever. And um, like going through um, the little process of making that every song that I made went on my album. It wasn't no extra songs to 
uh, pick from. So this time around, like, no soon as my project dropped, soon as Die Legend dropped, I instantly got into working on my new project. So now I'm completely done with it. It's slated to drop this uh, in May. Hey, do you feel like you're you're kind of underrated at least when at least as far as the media goes and everything like that you know because you know I'm a numbers guy so I, I see like you drop Die Legend and it does like forty thousand which that's incredible I mean you got a incredible fan base behind you like to me you're the you're the new like leading star out of Chicago and I, I don't know if you know like when we're mentioning artists you know and this really stemmed from a conversation I was having I don't know if people give you the proper due they kind of still think of you like you know like yeah, what has he done? You know what I mean? But you, you, you put out two projects which did pretty good. You know, so like, do you feel like you don't probably get the respect you deserve a little bit? No, I feel like I'm, I feel like I know I got to prove myself still. So I don't never pay too much attention to that because I know what it is that I got planned for myself. So I feel like somewhere down the line and with me keep on dishing out these good projects, I know that I'm going to get the respect that I, I really deserve. And I feel like the climate is changing for me to get that respect because my following is growing. I feel like a, uh, with every other little single that I release, people becoming more privy. Oh, yeah, he can really spit. I seen a little Dirk recently. He, uh, he, he, he said, man, this nigga fires a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. I like really like seeing, you know, some of your peers and also some of the, the people who came or started out before you from Chicago, like kind of giving you that nod and that respect. How does that make you feel? Shit, yeah, I, I just know coming from the city, like every everybody that blew from the city, we was on them when they was making their first songs. So mm. we've been supporting them since day one. Chief Keith with his first little music he ever put out, Lil Dirt. G Herbo, Bibby, all of them, all of the rappers who made it, like we really, really watched them evolve. So when I, you feel me, made it to the point that I did and to see them respect me, knowing that I watched them come up, it's like, it's all love really. But it was like something that I could really appreciate too. Um, I wanted to know Polo, like, you know, you gotta, fit, for you to be so young, you got a lot of patience and a lot of, um, a lot of patience and, 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 a, and a lot of discipline. I want to know, is that something that you grew up having, you know, from your, your family? Because we don't get a chance to see like a, a artist have such a close relationship with their dad and their mom and their siblings. It, or did it come from there? Was it like coming from you getting into the streets and making mistakes and kind of righting your wrongs? It was both like, um, like me, like the way that I was just brought up I was just brought up that type of way. And then just being involved in the streets too, like I learned a lot of lessons that made me become the way that I, I that, the way that I am today. Yo, Polo, I, I gotta get into my, um, you know, my, my little pocket watch, watching bag because, you know, recently <laughs> French said something which I believe is true. During this quarantine, we gonna see the rappers who was just fronting and the rappers who about to like really have to sell some shit to really survive because ain't no shows, ain't no a lot of stuff, right? I see you on the gram. You got half a million in the goddamn one-on-one backpack. I'm like, all right, man, this thing look like he's doing really well. I'm like, all right, cool. How are you like trying to make sure you plan for it? We don't know how long this thing gonna last. They're saying concerts might not come back till fall 2021. How are you doing like making sure you're either making smart investments or at least managing your money that you don't go broke and you know what I mean you got to go back to the hood some dumb shit like that you know what I mean how, how you handling all that really um I can't lie um as far as like doing some like features more often I've been doing because I know I'm just not a feature type of guy but with this whole thing going on and I had a big show run coming up before um the COVID crisis got in the way it was like I just been open to do a, like a lot of more features and keep you know some spending money in my pocket that way. But other than that, I ain't really too much stressing about. <laughs> I know when it pop back up, then I'm a, it's gonna be a ball game. So I ain't really you don't too think much about stressing. the lost money. No, I can't really think about it because it's gone and I can't like crowd with spill milk. That's a good point. But have you had any conversations with your team about long term planning? So like I said, if, you know, unfortunately shows don't come back till fall 2021 or whatever they're predicting. Have you guys already talked, especially since you have an album coming? Um, of course, fans are going to go stream the music. But have you guys already planned other ways you're going to get to interact with your fans over the next, let's say, you know, three to six months at least? 
uh, really just the only way that I see fit though is really just keep keeping in tune and dropping music. Cause I know that's the best thing to do in this time period where everybody on their phone, everybody just watching YouTube and on all the other streaming platforms. So best thing I can do is drop a whole flood on with music right now. Do you think the music is going to hit the same though? If like, you can't be out there and like, you know, like it, it, it's a different, like a pop out at your party going to hit different when everybody's out there. You feel me? Now you release that type of track, everybody in the crib, like we're going to pop out to the liver. Like, do you feel like music right now, even though, I get you as an artist, you want to put out more stuff, but because you can't be out there performing, working these records, do you think that it might still be like an odd time for releasing music? And I mean, th that had to come to your mind and your team's mind before you, you even think about dropping the, the next joint you about to drop. Nah, and, 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 and what you talking about right now, that's going to separate the artists who talking about something and who not. I feel like mm. this giving people a time for real to really listen to music and see what it is uh, artists is talking about. So if you got some real substance about the music that you putting out, then of course it's going, you feel me, bowl well with the state that we in right now. But if you ain't really talking about nothing, everybody going to be able to keep that for real even more because they really getting a chance to listen to the music. Mm. That's interesting. Um, we definitely hear with, a lot of artists, sorry, just say that, they always go off the top, right? They don't have time to write things down. You're one of the few people, especially like younger artists who have said, like, I've heard say that you will sit down and actually write notes. So when you first started rapping, was that your, the way you moved from the very, very beginning? You were always taking time to like write your lyrics out? Yeah, like when I was a, um, when I was a little kid, when I was in like elementary school, I just used to write bars down all, all the time. If I'm on a train, something pop up in my head. I'm writing it down all throughout the day. I just write it down. I kept a little notebook on me. And when I got older and I actually was involved in music, I just do the same thing, but just type it in my notes. But I always wanted to write me so my, like all my bars could be cohesive. Mm. Mm. I, I, had, I had a question as well. I wanted to know like, you know, um. But every with you being such a young artist, you know, you get a lot of artists that's, that that uh sometimes against their labels. And it seems like since you've come out, you haven't really had any issues. I want to know like how instrumental like Columbia has been with you at this time and and on your journey. You know, um, like how they supported you. Uh, Columbia been supporting me big time since day one. Uh, I feel like it's it's just like any it's like a family like relationship. You gonna bump here sometimes, but I never would really let that get out to the media. And I just feel like they 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 do the best that they can and really helping me like develop into the style that I'm trying to become. That's dope. Yo, Poji, man, listen, you, you gotta help help me understand this. Cause you know, uh, uh, while the quarantine been going down and everybody on Instagram being entertained by a lot of foolishness, someone from your city, Young Chop, he was going crazy for a little bit before he got incarcerated. but he had mentioned your name while all of that like whirlwind was going on. And he basically was like, he brought Meek up. He said, yo, he brought you to Meek. You were supposed to sign a Meek, something like that. Again, as much as you want to talk about it, explain that. Were you supposed to be signed to like Dream Chase or something like early on or? Like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know who said what and what's going on. I don't know why my name even get involved in some shit, man. I'll be chilling. I don't know what the fuck. But, 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 but there is no issue with Meek Mill, though. Hell no. I fuck with Meek oh. 110%. Okay, okay, okay. And, and I'm also assuming you, you, there's no problem with you and Chop. Maybe he just, just said whatever. Right? No, I don't know. Yeah, it's like, I don't really be tapping in with bro like that. So I don't know what's going on with him. It's just like he just pop up one day on Instagram. You feel me? And everybody just looking at it like, for me, from my standpoint, I'm just looking at it like, oh, he may be going through something. Like, I ain't looking at it like, where everybody else just buying into him trolling. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. That makes sense. I mean, you mentioned something earlier, which I, I want to, like, at least, you know, continue down that path of, you know, um, understanding. Like, you, you said substance. And, you know, for, you know, I cover a lot of, I cover all y'all do niggas. And here is someone actually say, you know, now we're going to see who actually saying some shit rather than, who, who actually got a catchy hook or some shit like that, it, it kind of stands out to me. At what point, like, during either you just, like, you know, jotting down notes as you was coming along, you were like, man, 
yo, I got to kind of give a story. Is it because of where you're from? Like, like where, when did that kind of, like, become internalized that rather than just saying anything on a beat just to, like, get a look, let me actually share my story because people going to relate or it's going to mean something. It's definitely because of where I'm from. And I know, like, Chicago got a rap sheet for being bad, but in, in a messed up city with the violence, but everybody, every city going through the same thing that we going through. It probably be on a larger scale because we from a place like Chicago, but everybody going through the same thing. It's a hood era. So I just know I want to connect with everybody like as far as like, I, I lost a homie too. I done been, I done been, I done seen the jail too. I done been in the streets and experienced hurt and pain before too. It's really uh, like where I come from. I just wanted to tell that story. Is is that the driver for you? Like, is it is it that or is it you wanting to be like a star and a legend or is it just you wanting to simply tell a story of, you know, the youth or, you know, your peers coming from Chicago? It's both. Um, Cause I, I know like in particular, I, one of my main reasons for rapping is when my friends was passing away. And just seeing everybody from the neighborhood be so hurt, I just wanted to be able to tell a story in a way. So that's why I might mention their names and, um, and music so much. But on top of that, just me being, having a competitive drive and what it is I'm doing, I want to be the best. I want to be one of the best or deem this one of the best. So I try to go as hard as I can every time I'm writing, every time I'm writing. It's nice to hear that you're so focused on your long-term success. When you look around at sort of, you know, just the music landscape and, and some of our legends, like who would you want to model your career after? Obviously everyone has their own path, you know what I mean? But people who have accomplished a lot that you would aspire to accomplish similar things. Um, I don't know nobody in particular as far as like accomplishments go, but I know as far as like mindset in the game, I, I like Tupac mindset a lot. And I like um, Nipsey Hussle mindset a lot. Mm -hmm. I like um, the way that um, Lil Wayne went about like his drive for music and his passion for music, pushing out so many projects. But other than that, I don't really got nobody else. <laughs> also with that, um, uh, I seen that you was trying to buy like uh, some, some parts of your neighborhood. Have you been successful with that yet? Um, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> What's been the nah. challenge with it? Is, is it like just not as easy as you thought it would be, like trying to get into the real estate game in that, in that spectrum? No, not so much as that. It's just that's one of the more expensive things to do right now. Mm. I feel like I've been trying to buy up a lot of property and land in Chicago, but that's like, that's something on a way larger scale that's going to take a little longer. Mm -hmm. Well, now's a good time to start small. You know, unfortunately, I think the real estate market is definitely going to be affected um, by what's happening right now. So in a few months, especially as mortgage rates are pretty low, hopefully you can at least, you know, get a couple properties and then keep building from there. Yeah. I, well, I, I did want to ask him, um, what's a legend to you? Because, you know, that word gets thrown around a lot. You know, like another person from your city that, you know, passed away, I believe this year, but I'm losing track of time. You know, uh, rest in peace of Juice World. Um, you know, people say he was a legend and then people say Nipsey was a legend and some people say, nah, nah, it's like, it's like the Pac, that's a legend. Like, what's a legend to you? And, you know, you, you got a project called Die a Legend and I'm guessing that got to be one of your goals. What do you feel you have to do to get to even be in that conversation? Sometimes it ain't um, just necessarily what you achieve. It can be like the type of person that you was and how many people that you touch personally. Because I know uh, in, in our hood, we deem the people who die as legends. And one thing that made me feel like that they really were that is whenever it was like a funeral or something or an event celebrating their birthday, like thousands of people would come out. And you just think about like this person touched so many people to make all of us come together and be able to enjoy this crazy lifestyle we live in. So we look at them as legends for that. You can be looked at as a legend for being an activist in your community. I don't really think necessarily think that you got to achieve so much to be a legend. So I think that um, I could be a legend from the type of stuff that I do outside around. 
-hmm. and like being involved in my community, starting an AAU team for my neighborhood, like stuff like that. That's, That's dope, though. That's dope. That's actually super insightful. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, you know what does cross my mind? Because, like, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here talking to you. You know, I've covered Chicago a lot. I remember, like, just even covering, like, drill 2012, 2013. And, like, like I, I don't know if, if, if this is true of you. Maybe you've learned, like, from some of the mistakes. But, like, man, Chief Keith was so much in his element. Like, he wouldn't even do an interview. He wouldn't even show up to his own video shoot. Like, you know... Lil Dirk had a bunch of label problems, and, and I think they, they they took a lot of, you know, setbacks for, like, you know, even now, you know, Dirk is doing well, but, like, I think you kind of get it. You you get it in terms of, yeah, you could still be hood and street, but you, you understand, like, these other elements that, um you know, kind of, like, play into things. Um, have you kind of really watched, you know what I mean? I know, I know you say you didn't have, like, people who you're trying to inspire to on this, like, Tupac. But did you watch people, other people's mistakes and be like, Yo, you know what, I'm going to be a little different? Yeah, in a way, like like I said, we watched most of those artists come up. So I don't know, like, um, it's certain things that or certain ways that they move that you could just note in your head, like, okay, so if I made it to that, to be in that position, I probably got to move like this or I probably got to get this look like. Um, I know in particular, like, um, um Dirk and her when they secured the double XL thing that made me like have that on my wish list like oh I gotta do this or if I would see um them like I could see somebody trying to troll uh her or something or troll Dirk or something and they never respond I'm like okay I'm gonna note that in my head to not respond when I get in that position so it's just really watching how they move and really knowing like all right when I make it one day then that's how I'm gonna move too in a way <laughs> no, no, no. I, I completely get it because I'm telling you, you're like a, a really refined version of it. And mm -hmm. I remember looking at them saying they were just too hood to get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but like, no one will say you ain't hood enough or street enough or real enough. But like, you're doing the things I think that's going to bring you to the next level quicker without having those setbacks. Yeah, definitely. And you've been building out your own label as well, right? Yeah, I got, I got like. I got three artists. I got an artist from Syracuse, New York, named Scory. Mm -hmm. I got um, Young Live out of Philly. Mm -hmm. And I got T.O.B. Duke from Detroit. I'm trying to get a lot of artists, though. Like, I'm trying to really go up with it. Like, I need to find somebody, like, a pop artist, though, to add to my little roster. Mm -hmm. How do you meet these people? I know about Live, too. Live is fire. Yeah. How do you meet these people? Like, you know, like I feel like the, the, the life of being an artist is so busy. Like, how do you even get to run into other people who are creative but are just not there yet. I'm I'm like an A and I though. I stay on YouTube all day, YouTube surfing, finding all the like I could be up on the artists who who are about to blow, like when they on their first couple of tracks that they posted on YouTube. I know one person I can say in particular was no cap. I I found out about his music like back in his earlier stages and I kept telling my homie, I'm like he gon he gonna be one of those people to blow next and next thing you know all the other rappers was co-signing them but i was on them early on hmm. i mean since your schedule is so busy too like ak is mentioning you're dropping a lot of music how are you finding time to help develop those artists you know are you going to be super super involved like answering all their phone calls every question they have or are you also building a team on your label who's going to help you balance all of that i'm building a team but i'm still real connected with them like like really playing a big brother role and whatever advice that they need or insight that they need on something, because I know the knucklehead mistakes that I made. And really, though, it's, it's really easier for me because I don't went through the process of trying to get signed and meeting with these labels and knowing what we going to end up having a discussion about. So I just really play the big, big brother role for real. That's dope. That's dope, man. You got a lot on your plate. So the album is coming uh, in a few weeks. Looking forward to that. And you want to go ahead and plug the new single before we go? Um, Polo G D and D out now, man. My new project on the way. Looking out for it. Ak, I see you thinking over there. Any final thoughts? No, <laughs> you always got final thoughts. I, <laughs> you know, I got a million thoughts. <laughs> a million. <laughs> no, no, I, I, well, well, I I only wanted to ask him like if there's anyone within just like music right now that you know maybe he hasn't secured a collab from, but he would definitely want to work with because you know I see a, a, a few features and collabs on this project, and I'm like, all right, cool. Who would he want to work with that he hasn't got to yet, you know, in his, like, you know, 
collab bucket list type of thing. And I'm wondering who that is. Well, I need a song with like Drake or somebody. Mm. You got to yeah. put it in the air. I like that. Yeah, I, I think I think he hard. I think we'll mesh well on some, I'm coming like on the street vibe, but I know how to switch it up with the pop a little bit too. I think I think we'll make a hard song. I, I like Roddy a lot and um and I rock with YB heavy. Mm. Mm. That's dope. That's dope. I, I think all those will actually actually be good. Uh, yeah, and, good and, 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 the, and the last thing is I don't know how they're doing the freshman list this year, but like you, you don't you're not one of those artists that feel like, you know, sometimes when an artist has a semi successful project, they're like, yo, yo, they're late. They should have got me last year. Like I'm good off of it. It, like, it, does that still mean as much as you said it meant before? Like, even if they, they hit you this year saying, yo, Polo, we, we need you for this. Yeah, I feel like I'll jump at the opportunity for the simple fact that that was a bucket list thing for me. Like, I had certain things on my wish list to do as an artist when I came up, uh, when I was coming up. Like, I wanted a um, Funk Flex freestyle. I wanted to be on the XXL cover. I wanted a Grammy nod or some shit. So, Anything that I had on my bucket list is damn near like I, I'm obligated to it. Almost. So you're saying that being on Everyday Struggle is not on the bucket list? <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that to my man. Like, come on, man. <laughs> this was before we existed. It was probably like in 2014 he was thinking about these things. Chill. <laughs> no, but I, I just say, man, Polo, it's, it's really good to see, like, the trajectory you've had, like, over the past two years, man. Like, I remember the first time I saw Finer Things and everybody was racing to sign you. And you know what I mean? And, and like, to see what you at now is – it shows that you you're doing the right thing and you got the right team around you. So we definitely root you on a bit. Appreciate it. Much love. Yeah, man. Nice to meet you. It's nice to hear that you're you're so focused on actually making good music and being around for a long time. I see Ak moving his mouth again. Final, final thoughts. Uh Polo G, thank you again. Ak, what is it? No, no, I wasn't going to ask him a question. I, I'm just excited to see how his growth is <laughs> on his journey. That's it. Like, I, I, I want to see him in a year from now. Okay. You feel me? Like, like having these conversations and then seeing it a year later, even better. So, you know, yo, you got all my support. You know, you come from a place where, you know, I've covered a lot of people that's been through a lot of things. And, of course, you've been through a lot of things. I, I, I love how you're taking the industry perspective and how to deal with the career stuff while you're dealing with probably all type of the BS that, mm -hmm. you know, of course, we didn't talk about. We're going to talk about it here. But um, I'm proud of you, and I hope you continue. Because in a year from now, I know you're going to be in a higher level. You, you got it. I appreciate y'all. Much love. Thanks for having me. All right. Just don't forget about us. So when you get too famous and legendary, come visit us in New York in our studio next time. Hopefully, Polo G, take care. Go stream d, &D. In 2030. <laughs> 2030. <laughs> oh, man. We'll see you guys next week on Everyday Struggle.